I'm making pizza today and I'm making it on a pizza stone and I've had this pizza stone for a couple of years. I've made quite a few pizzas on it, but the great thing about a pizza stone is it's not just for pizza. You can use it for things like focaccia. I've made focaccia bread several times on my pizza stone and you can also use it for things like artisan breads where it doesn't necessarily get cooked in a bread pan, but you just shape it and bake it. So the way a pizza stone works is you put it in the oven and you preheat it probably for about an hour and at a really, really high temperature. And when you put your pizza onto it or focaccia bread or other type of bread, then the crust just immediately starts cooking and it cooks at a really, really high heat. And the rest of the oven temperature, of course, cooks the rest of the, the bread or the pizza. So you get this really nice crust on the bottom and the rest of it is really, really well cooked. So I happen to have the Emile Honoré uh, pizza stone and this is what my mom got me for Christmas one year. So that's why I have it. You can get ones that um, maybe um, aren't the really nice color, uh, but are just, they just look like the bottom of this looks because it's unpainted and they'll work just as well. You can get those at, I've seen them at the grocery store, places like that, a few other stores. But they all work in essentially the same way. You pop them into the oven. Um, I always cook mine at, or start preheating mine at 500 degrees for about an hour. So I'm gonna pop it into the oven, put it onto the lowest rack so it's right near where the um, heat is coming from. So the pizza stone has been heating up for an hour and I've just started to prepare the pizza. Now I'm using homemade pizza dough. You can make your own. You can buy some frozen pizza dough from the grocery store. Some people or some grocery stores sell that. Um, some bakeries will sell you pizza dough as well. And so what I've done is I've stretched it out. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect round shape. Mine's a little bit square. It depends how it turns out. Every, every pizza you make at home will be a bit of a different shape. But what's most important is to add a lot of flour to the bottom of it. And that's so when you transfer it to your pizza peel, um, you want to make it so that the flour keeps the pizza from sticking at all to the pizza peel. So it's sliding around nicely, so that should be good. Now, I'm not making a traditional pizza today. I'm not even using sauce. What I'm using is just bits of brie. I had some leftover brie, and that's why I'm making pizza today. Brie, when it heats up, gets nice and oozy, so it makes its own sauce. So I'm just throwing that on right now. And next I'm putting a bit of prosciutto, just sprinkling that on. And you can use whatever you want. Um, if you like a traditional pizza, use a tomato sauce, use mozzarella cheese, use um, pepperoni, whatever you like. Pizza doesn't have to follow any sort of rules, so it's whatever you want. And then I have some caramelized onions that I, I've actually made a ton of caramelized onions and froze small amounts of it so that I can just grab some out whenever I want some. And I just add that on top. And now that's ready to go into the oven. So you take the pizza peel and you open the oven. Now you can see the pizza stone is actually a darker color. That's because it's so hot. Now you just take a pizza peel and you shake the pizza onto the pizza stone. And close the oven and let it cook. Now the pizza is nice and golden brown, so it's ready to come up. So you grab your pizza peel, scoop it in, try and grab it before it falls off the back. And then set it onto a wire rack. Cool. Now, it's a little bit hot right now, but we'll try and look underneath. You can see underneath, you can see the flower that was there, and you can see it has that really, that nice sound, and it's just a beautiful crust. Let it cool for a couple minutes, and then you can eat it. 